Let's continue looking at the official Django tutorial. We're going to look at section 4 in this video and we're going to introduce HTML web forms. Now forms are very simple, they take input from a user on a web page, they send that data or that input to the server for processing and validation and then usually that input is going to be stored in a database. So we have a simple flow diagram here from the user to the server and then into the database but along the way that data has to be sanitized. That is a key step for security and for data integrity. So we're going to look at forms in this video before we get started. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link in the comments just below the video. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member as well. We've opened memberships very recently. Thank you to everyone who has joined the channel so far. And I want to just quickly mention this poll that we have for content to be coming out in October or November. If you want to vote on one of these options, that is on the YouTube posts section. And we'll have a video on Django Tenant coming out very soon in response to that last post. So let's get started and we're going to look at writing a minimal HTML form for the Django tutorial. Now we're going to look at detail.html. That was the page for an individual question. So if we open up the application, here we have the list page with each question and if we click one of the questions we are taken to that detail page and it lists out the question text as well as the different options associated with the question. Now when you want to vote in a poll you need some way of selecting these options and then sending that selection to the server where the server can then process that and store it. So like I said in the intro that requires a form where you select an option and then you send the data when you submit the form to the Django server. So we need a way to take these choices that are associated with the question and not just have a bullet point list here but actually have some options that are selectable and then a submit button that allows us to submit the content to the server. Now the Django documentation has code for this so what I'm going to do is just copy that and we're going to paste that into detail.html and we can then explain this code. So let's remove this choice set that we had before and we're going to paste in the code from Django and save this file. Now before we explain the, the code, let's go to the page here and we're going to have a look at what we have. So we have a very simple page here and we've also got a duplicated header. So what I'm going to do is just remove this header at the top and we can save this and go back here. So we have the header here and then we have the three options, but they're not just bullet points. We can actually select one of these options now. And when we select the option, we can click the vote button and we're taken to this new page when we click that button. So what on earth is going on here? Let's go back to the template and we're going to start simple by looking at the form element itself. So in HTML, we can define a form element and the two attributes that we have on the form are action and method. Now the action here points to a URL and we're using the Django URL template tag that we saw in the previous video to refer to this particular URL. It's called vote and we pass the question ID into that. Now this basically tells the browser where to send the request when the user submits the form and the method is the type of HTTP request to be sent. In this case, it's a post request because we're posting new data to the server for processing. So whenever you need to alter data server side, you should send a post request when you do that. And if we look at urls.py, we're going to see the URL that we have here with the name of vote. So this is the actual path for that URL. When we submit the form, it's going to send a post request to this particular URL, which is then going to use the vote view that we have in the Django application. So let's open views.py. And at the bottom here, we have that view. At the moment, it's not doing much, but we're going to change that very soon. But this is the view that should handle that post request when the user submits the form. So that's the form element here. And inside that, we have another template tag, and that's CSRF token. Now, this is a security measure that's built into Django. This actually adds a hidden field into the form with a token. And whenever you're sending these unsafe requests that can change data on the server, such as post requests, you should include a CSRF token in the form because that is going to prevent the server from processing insecure requests that might have come from another domain. And this is standard for all Django forms that should submit a post request. You should include the CSRF token inside the body of the form element. And we're going to see what that looks like if we go to the page here and we inspect the HTML elements on this page. So here you can see we have the form. And then if we look at this input here, it's a hidden input and it has the name of CSRF middleware token. And you can see the value that I'm highlighting here. That's the actual value of the token. That can then be verified by Django when you actually submit this form. And it prevents someone sending a post request to this endpoint here that we have. 
So that's the form action. We don't want just anybody to be able to send a post request to that particular URL. And the CSRF token is a way to prevent that. So that's one takeaway from this video. Always have a CSRF token inside a form if you're sending a post request. Now underneath that we have a field set that contains this legend that has the question text. And that is what we see here on the page. So you can see that here, the question text inside the field set. And then below that, we have the for loop that we saw in the last video for each choice that's associated with the question. And this time, instead of just rendering out the text in a bullet point list, we have an input of type radio and each input has a value that is linked to the choice ID. So remember those choices from the database, they have an ID. And if we go back to the page here and inspect the elements and have a look at each option that we have inside this list, you can see choice one here has a value or a primary key of four and choice two has a value of five and so on. So each choice now has that value. And that means that when we select one of these choices and we send that data to the server in a post request, the ID here can then be used to signify a vote for that given choice for the question. We're gonna see that very soon when we actually write the view for this code. And one special construct I want to highlight here is forloop.counter. So that is used here to render out an ID for the input and also for the label. So again, if we go back and inspect the DOM here, we have an ID of choice one, choice two, and choice three. And basically when you have a template for loop in Django with this syntax here, for loop.counter is basically gonna to point to the iteration of the for loop that you're on. So the first time you iterate, it's gonna be one and then two and so on. It's quite similar to the enumerate function in Python. So it's not syntactically similar to enumerate, but it's similar in the sense that it gives you the index of iteration, but it starts at one and not zero. And if you want to change that, you can use counter zero, which is another construct in Django or Jinja templates. So if we save that after setting it to counter zero, you can see it starts from zero. So we get choice zero, one and two. But I think for forms, it's more intuitive to start from one. So if you need the index of iteration, these are some special constructs in Django templates that are available to give you that inside a template for loop. So let's now move on. Underneath this field set, we have an input of type submit, and it's got the value of vote. And that is this button essentially that we see here. When this is clicked, it's gonna submit the form and send the request to this action URL. And that URL is then responsible for processing the data that has been sent. Now, if you want to actually see what data is being sent in the post request, let's try this out. Let's say that we select yes to the question and I'm gonna to go to the network tab here and we click vote. Now we can view information on the request that has been sent. For example, we can see it's a post request here. If we go to payload, we get this form data that's actually being sent to the server. So we send the CSRF middleware token, that's the hidden input and that has the token value here and that is gonna be used by Django to verify that the request is valid. But the important one for selecting a choice is this choice option here, and we've set that to the value four, and that was the value associated with that first radio button. So that's how we submit the form in Django. We send the data to the server, and that data can then be processed inside the relevant view. So inside the vote view that we have here, we're gonna process the post request, and that's something we're gonna do in the next video. We're gonna leave it here for now. So the important summary of this video is that we can define forms inside our Django templates and forms are linked to an action which tells the browser where to send the request and we also have a method which is usually get or post but when it's a post request and it's designed to alter data server side you should always include the CSRF token inside that request and that's very easy to do in Django. You can just use the CSRF token template tag and that embeds that token inside the form. And finally, we saw that we can take each choice that's associated with a question, and instead of just listing out the text, we can actually have a radio button that's linked to that choice's primary key value in the database, and we can then send the relevant choice to the server when the user makes a selection on the page and clicks the vote button to submit the form data. And we saw an example of clicking that button and the payload that's actually sent to the server here, and this time the choice is set to five. What we're gonna look at in the next video is we're gonna take this vote view that we have in the Django application and we're actually going to process the post request and save the data into the database. And what we're actually going to save if we go to models.py and look at the choice model is we're going to save something to this votes field. This is an integer field that has a default of zero. 
But when a user actually votes on a particular option here, we want to take the existing value of that vote and that's going to be an integer value. When a new vote comes in for that choice, we want to increment that by one and then save the new value to the database. So we're going to handle the code in the Django view for that submission in the next video. Thanks again for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link to that just below the video. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe as well. And the link to this full playlist is just underneath the video in the comments. So if you want to catch up on all the previous videos, you can also do so. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you soon in the next video.